Did you know that trust you and to me could be a treasure to someone else? It is perceived as a real pain in the neck, a nuisance to the world's largest freshwater lake, Lake Victoria. In fact, it is perceived to be a pollutant, a menace plant it has been branded. Call it water hyacinth or kwekwe or magugu if you so wish. According to Dominic, the founder of Biogas International, water hyacinth is a blessing in disguise. Um, the water hyacinth thrives in dirty water. If you see water hyacinth in your pond or in your lake or in your dam on your farm, it's an indicator that your water is pollutant. It's polluted. You shouldn't be removing it. What it's doing, it is cleaning the water. It is a water filter. It is sucking up the nutrients uh, from the water. We should be embracing it. We should be looking at, look at all of the positive traits of it. It's pest resistant. It's there all year round. It's going to clean the water. It'll grow until the water's clean and then it stops growing because it's got nothing to eat. This is Kisumu's tourism hotspot, the famous Dunga Beach. And here we visit one of Biogas International's plants to put to perspective the importance of biogas to the maritime life and domestic use in the production of biogas and liquid fertilizer. The next biggest advantage is not just the gas but all of those nutrients and minerals that are in the water that have now been sucked into the plant are now available in your biofertilizer that comes out of your biogas digester as pure, rich, organic fertilizer. Um, the fertilizer that comes out of our digester or the bio, a lot of people call it bio slurry, is not a slurry, it's liquid. Um, everything that goes into the digester completely dissolves and so what's coming out is pure water, water consistency. That can now be moved on to the farmers who are along the riverbanks and everything. So instead of using chemicals that are destroying our soils, we can use this organic fertilizer. Now, not only is it a fertilizer, it's also an absolutely fantastic insect repellent. It's non-poisonous, it doesn't kill anything, but you will see your plants will be completely free of all of the pests. Um, so because it's a liquid, and we're trying to sell it to farmers to use, the farmers are not very familiar with the liquid fertilizer. They are they like dry granular fertilizer in a, in a sack form. So we're having big challenges trying to get them onto the uh, liquid fertilizer um, train. So we are setting up demo farms um, where we are practicing um, climate smart regenerative agriculture using drip irrigation on cone gardens. So we're getting very, very high yields in a very, very small space. Um, and then we're going to be relying on that copycat uh, um, effect where people will be able to come and see what we're doing so that we're going to be, oh, we are open to the public. And uh, they'll, be, they'll, be, they'll see how simple it is and hopefully they'll want to replicate on their farms um, and then hopefully we will we'll then be able to sell them the fertilizer and the compost uh, for you know, keeping the, the soil alive in their vertical gardens. Dom and Dan, one of his employees, a farm that the community has already started embracing this technology with about 50 households already installed, including an adjacent trade station. Domestic systems also run on this. So we can have, here in Dunga, we have more than 50 domestic systems uh, running. Um, so we can have domestic as well as commercial uh, biogas running, running on the water hyacinth. So the biogas we use for cooking, we connect the ladies who are the, the frying fish along the, along the beach. So we connect them onto the gas so that they can use a very cheap and clean uh, 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 energy. And the fertilizer itself, we use it for agriculture. As you know, uh, the most expensive government in agriculture is fertilizer. We have um, Oceanala radio station. Uh, directly from the digester straight into their kitchen um, they're using the gas um, we're looking at people who are doing commercial cooking uh, especially with uh, pressure cookers uh, so that we can speed up uh, um, their cooking uh, we're also looking at how to value to reduce post harvest losses of fruit and vegetables so we're setting up dryers for fruits and vegetables as well uh, just to demonstrate that you know um, things don't have to go to waste because there's no one to eat them right now once they're dry, they can last for months. Wait a bit. Could this be the technology our centers, towns, and cities been waiting for?
to help curb the plight of fast-growing garbage collection centers. Wherever there is humans, there is waste. Wherever there is waste, there is biogas. Biogas potential. There is fertilizer potential. Instead of trying to move the waste out of town and then move the gas back into town, set up the digester in town and just move the waste to the digester and then just turn it into your value add, turn it into fertilizer. Move the fertilizer out of town and use the gas in town to offset the charcoal. Considering that it would be an injustice to my viewers if my tour ends at the Biogas International without asking the question on gas processing, I find myself asking, what is the process of producing biogas? Um, this system can run um, on about a ton of uh, waste per day. We have um, a team of uh, youths that we hired from here um, who basically go out, we have a little scoot, a little, a little boat, they go out and they harvest the water hyacinth. So they will bring in about half of a ton of water hyacinth um, that then comes and it's ground using a grinding machine. Um, I like to say that God gave us teeth to chew before we swallow. So the digester is a stomach. So you want to grind up whatever it is you're feeding into the digester. At the same time, we have um, uh, buckets that bins that we supply to all of the restaurants uh, within Dunga and they pile up all of their organic material that was ending up on the beach and, and causing a huge stench and we grind that as well and so that goes into the digester as well the food remains we shred with the together with the hyacinth and uh, we slurify that scared water in a ratio of one to one into the system then you feed if you install the system for the first time you feed in cow dung to get the right bacteria for the digestion of what you feed uh, that is anaerobic bacteria when you uh, have that in the system then you now have everything in place now what you have just be feeding every day or uh, regularly so that you have what the bacteria can feed on these are um, cross flow digesters uh, this particular model is an m50 and it has got seven chambers so it's like seven digesters one after the other so what you feed to the first one displaces into the second one into the third one and eventually displaces uh, out of the last one. Uh, the fourth stage, that is the methanogenesis stage now, the hydrogen gas is being consumed, then the acetates or acetic acids converted to methane gas, which you write as a, a CH4 in the chemical formulas. Then you also have hydrogen sulfate as a rare gas, which you find in the process. You also get uh, carbon dioxide being produced, but those are in small quantities. The highest composition is methane, which is around 80 to 90 percent in the mixture. Uh, the rest are just in small quantities. After production of uh, methane gas, which is the main gas now in the process, uh, you collect it on top of the system. Uh, that's uh, the balloons you can see on top of the system across. After the collection now, the gas can be used for various purposes. And then the fertilizer over pours from the end of the digester, and then that goes now into the irrigation systems on the farm. Kisumu uh, County, they really like the technology. We've got a setup here in Dunga Beach. We have another setup in, um, in Ahero, uh, where we're doing the same. In Ahero, we actually set up within the county offices. In the beginning, they were very, very skeptical that you're putting a biogas digester behind, beside a government office. It's going to be smelly, it's going to be this, it's going to be that. Um, our site is the cleanest piece of land in, um, in Ahero. So we are looking for other counties to now come on board and say, I want this on my beaches. Um, you know, how much will it cost? We'll put them in, we'll train the people how to use them, train them how to harvest the hyacinth, train them on how to, uh, to use the gas, how to modify stoves, how to make biogas stoves. Uh, we would hope that they would now be able to just see that this decentralized waste management makes far, far more sense than centralized. Because we are not just managing the waste, organic waste, we're managing all of the waste in totality, which includes the plastics, the metals, the glass, the diapers, the ladies' pads, everything. Um, so by the time we're done with um, sorting the waste, because we want the organic, we've sorted everything else. And then we are stockpiling um, all of the other items for the mainstream recyclers, um, which means that there's nothing, absolutely nothing left over to go to a dump site or to go to a landfill. We're already exporting to Zimbabwe, we're already exporting to Zambia, we're already exporting to, to countries in West Africa. The most amazing thing is we've just got an order from Switzerland 
to, to export digester to Switzerland. Switzerland are being affected by the, um, by the Ukraine war because they, they rely on natural gas from there. So they've got generators that run on natural gas. Now biogas is natural gas. They've got, they've got waste, they've got animals, they've got um, organic waste. So they want our digesters because they're so simple to... So this is going to be the first time we're going to have not north-south technology transfer or south-south technology transfer. It's south-north technology transfer. So we're very, we're very happy that we are, you know, I think we're leading in the biogas space of being the first developing country to export uh, and technology developed in the developing country to uh, a first world country, a developed country. All said and done, it is time to take up the speed and salute this adventurous venture. Reporting for HLCTV from Kisumu, I am Emmanuel Juma.